Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series with XTRG uh, and ourself. Uh, XTRG playing as the Japanese, and yours truly playing as the Allied Powers. It is February of 1942, uh, February 14th to be exact, it is Valentine's Day as we watch the battle replay come in, and uh, we'll be issuing our orders for February 15th. I'm really hoping we can kind of make a little bit more progress and get us into into March here before too long. Um, it feels like we've been in February forever. It feels like we've been in the first half of February forever, and that ends today. Um, not sure if there's going to be a ton going on this turn or not. I kind of get the sense there won't be. He did land at Balak Poppin last turn, and uh, he'll probably take it this turn, I would imagine. He uh, landed with... A third of a division there. What's this? Wow. Okay, so Japanese are really going after Ambon with uh, their battleships here. Uh, one, two, three, four battleships here. The Hagoya, the Isa, the Yashimiro, and the Fuso. So uh, the positive is that he's burning a lot of fuel, I guess, to sail his battleships all over. Uh, but he is using his battleships again uh, on the island of Ambon, where we've got pretty good uh, coastal batteries there uh, with a reasonable force there. But he's already landed troops, so it's only a matter of time till that base falls to him. Meanwhile, he continues to bombard. Uh, Wang Kao is sort of on the eastern Chinese coast. Uh, U.S. submarines operating near truck. Uh, our sub I guess we fired torpedoes on enemy sub chasers, but um, then we dove and escaped. Something just sank. I don't know what, but I heard the little bubbling in, in my ear of a ship going down. So that's good, because it means a Japanese ship of sorts sunk, because I didn't get any kind of notice to the effect of my own ship sinking. And we're into the air phase. So we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit, see what happens here. I thought I pulled my subs off the northern coast of Japan. Air operation phase. As you may remember, we had that dogfight over Chengsha last turn. We pulled our fighters back uh, to Chungking to regroup uh, and to avoid enemy fighter sweeps that could uh, sort of shoot us apart. I didn't want to get into a war of attrition with my few very skilled pilots there. I want to kind of hit and run is the objective there. Japanese bombardments here in Wankau. China being the dumping ground for Japanese bombs, of course. More fighter sweeps over Singapore. I don't see any actual bombing or very limited bombing going on over Singapore, though. 50 Nate escorts. Six dive bombers. Not going to do much damage with that. Meanwhile, I did start upgrading some of my PBY Catalinas to the PBY-5A, I think it is. Which theoretically comes with radar on it. Although I don't think we yet have radar unlocked or we don't have all enough... Uh, devices yet to equip all those aircraft with air with radar but eventually once we either get the radar unlocked uh, once it you know so the R&D period passes or the the requisite number of items are, are produced then um, we'll uh, we'll see what kind of a difference that makes to have radar guided uh, PBY Catalinas that'll be nice Already the uh, PVYs are littered all over the South Pacific, so I imagine it would be much easier to keep track of what's going on with radar-guided PVYs. Meanwhile, bombing over Changsha again. Again, we pulled our aircraft back. Sallies are hitting unescorted, although there were several sweeps of fighters that came previously. Yeah, Stein, I don't know anything about war in the East two yet. I, I, I mean, I just know that it's coming. They've, they made a kind of a couple of public posts about it, saying they were planning on finishing it up by, you know, in 2020 and, pub and, and putting it on sale in 2020. So I don't know what more in these two will look like yet. I have seen nothing. I know it's been in, I think it's been in beta for a while, 
And uh, I, I imagine there are people who do know, but they probably can't talk about it yet. Obviously, that'll be a... I mean, the base War in the Pacific game is actually a 2004 game. War in the Pacific uh, AE came out in 2009, but it was really just a mod of the original War in the Pacific of 2004. So the game we're looking at now is, at its core, 15 years old compared to whatever War in the East 2 looks like. Um, some, uh, something sank or, or some men went ashore. It sounded like there was some flooding off Balak Papin. Meanwhile, Japanese, uh, our, our Japanese destroyer transports, APDs, they're armored personnel destroyers, I guess, uh, coming in shore here, dropping troops near Balak Papin. Our coastal batteries here, 120 millimeter coastal batteries, are hitting back at the Japanese, uh, transports here. Uh, get, scoring a couple of hits. It'd be great to be able to sink a ship or two. You can see here the uh, Akazi is on fire after taking six shell hits, so that's good. 24 enemy casualties inflicted. We lost 22 of our own. Anything we can do to bloody him and slow him down is good for us. But that looks like it's about it for this turn. This is a pretty quiet turn. And in all honesty, I doubt I'll have much to show on my my side of things either. More bombardments at Wang Kao. Allied bombardment at Balak Papan. I didn't think I ordered that. But a Dutch battalion there bombards the 4th Japanese Infantry Division. Uh, the sea element. So the 3rd of the, of the 3 detachments of the 4th Japanese Infantry Division. And 2 Japanese Air Force companies. So they're definitely going to put in air units in Balak Papan. Probably to hammer Sorbet uh, heavily. Japanese launch a shock attack there. They do lose a little bit of disruption there. You can see the 4th C Division lost about 15 assault value there in the assault. But uh, they uh, drove us back there. We have uh, a base up here at Samardina, or however you pronounce that. So they drove our troops back there. Two units retreated. We lost 886 men, 17 squads destroyed, 48 non-combatants, 11 engineers, 23 guns, 3 vehicles. They lost 56 men, nothing actually destroyed. Japanese deliberate attack at Terrafang here, north of the Arafua Sea. Again, solidifying his position to the west of New Guinea. And a Japanese uh, naval guard unit here takes the base at Tana, which is inching him a little bit closer to Fiji, securing the eastern flank a little bit of New Caledonia. Japanese deliberate attack at Barber, a little bit to the west here, really solidifying that northern line here, the Timor line north of the Timor Sea. So, several bases fall. Johnston Island increases its fortifications to level 3. Nanning improves fortifications to level 2. And that should do it as we move through the production and the supply phase. Spoilage, aircraft repair, supply. End of day. I'm just trying to see what's coming up, what, what, we, what units we get this turn. Normally you can fast forward through all this, and usually I do. So the battleship Ramillies and Resolution have arrived at Cape Town. Light cruiser for the U.S. has arrived in the Cape Town or in the Panama Canal area. Several American uh, personnel destroyers, so American fast transports, the handful of allied fast transports that exist. Meanwhile, some submarines are arriving on the U.S. West Coast. Some cargo ships and troop transports. Some mine layers at Karachi. Singapore, even. Why would I want mine layers at Singapore at this point? I, hopefully I can get those out of there. Okay, so first things first, let's not forget about those mine layers at Singapore. Why I want two mine layers at Singapore, I don't know. Can they even get out of there? Like, what's their actual range? Uh, they must be local mine layers. Doesn't look like they can actually... How are they mine layers, but they can't actually lay any mines? That's weird. Do 
Do they carry any mines? No. They're really... Oh, they're motor launches. That's it. They're not mine layers. They're motor launches. Damn it. Well, I guess that's good. I'd rather not... Mine layers are valuable. Motor launches are not. Alright, we'll have them fall back to Palembang. Meanwhile, at Singapore itself, our fortifications are still at level 4. We're working our way back up to level 5 forts, which I think... Actually, no, we didn't have level 5 forts when he crossed over. We were at level 4, I think. And uh, we're trying to get up to level 5. We're at level 4. We have 30,000 supply at the base at the moment. Uh, fair amount of fuel, 53,000. We're about 40% of the way there to level 5 forts. The troops that we have in base are about 1,000 assault value, so not a very strong force. Uh, it's actually pretty weak. But it is what it is. Um, really, it's the 9th Indian Division, the 11th Indian Division, and then the 27th Australian Brigade, which are the real strength of that defensive line. Where are we at building our forts up here? 63. Meanwhile, at Bataan, we still have about 1,800 assault value there. That's largely vested in the 2nd Filipino Army Constabulary Division, and then three Filipino smaller divisions, the 41st, 51st, and 21st. Then we have the 4th U.S. Marine Regiment uh, and a couple of other units as well. The 31st U.S. U 31st US Army Regiment. Those are the elements that are holding the defensive line there. Meanwhile, one thing you may have noticed this turn is that our supply actually went up at uh, Bataan. I think it was at 33,700 last turn. It's at 34,1. And that's because the patrol craft Zeman, the... Plucky little, Z the plucky Zeman, as I like to call uh, the uh, the Dutch patrol craft, snuck in an additional 400 supply. It's got another 200 it's unloading before it leaves the base. So that should buy us an extra day, if you will, of supply and defenses. Uh, Any time that he's required to kind of keep troops bottling our, our troops up in Bataan, and the longer we can hold on at Bataan, the better. So the fact that we snuck in another 600 supply, it doesn't dramatically change the situation in a non-combat day that's probably two or three days worth of supply in a combat day that's less than one day of supply. But, you know, that's that's a, a, any little bit of supply helps because, again, as long as you keep the supply health over your supply requested by, by a healthy margin, you, uh, you kind of continue having very effective combat. Uh, effectiveness. So th look at it this way. We have set or five times, almost five times, our requested supply at Bataan. So we've got five times our requested supply at Bataan, and it is already February 15th. And he has not yet begun, begun trying to reduce our, our level four forts. Hasn't really done anything there yet. So the fact that we're still about five times above our requested supply, and we're halfway through February is a really good thing, I think. I'm, I'm hoping it means we can hold out into April, uh, get all the way through February, all the way through March, and, and maybe, you know, sometime into April before uh, before we're seriously in danger. Uh, meanwhile, in the Chinese theater, we've got four enemy units here detected to the south of Henyang. We have troops at Henyang. Not a ton, but we've got some. We've got 600 uh, garrison uh, assault value there. We also have th level 3 forts, so if he does try and cross at Henyang, that could be a problem. He could flank the Changsha position, or maybe not, I'm not sure. If he does cross, I'm guessing he doesn't take it in one turn, and if he does cross, I can raise another 800 uh, reinforcements here from the west into Henyang as well, and maybe that's even enough to push him back. We also have an additional 1,000 assault value here, uh, to the to the northeast. So theoretically, we could race in like 1,600 additional reinforcements uh, if he moves in toward Henyang, bringing our total strength up to about 2,200. Uh, the only problem, the main, re main reason I'm not doing that is I've seen this strong force here. He could move toward Henyang, but he also could move west. And so I'm keeping a larger amount of assault value here, a little bit larger amount to the west, because if he tries to cut the rail line and the entire position here, by moving along this rail line to the west, we don't have any fortifications there, and he'd be forced to shock attack immediately across a river. So I'd rather uh, kind of keep him... Uh, I'd rather have him attack into defenses than, than not defenses, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
Meanwhile, there's many additional forces over here, well, one here, but there's 12 enemy units here to the southeast of Changsha. Uh, I think they might actually be, I don't know, if 104 units of Changsha, but only 3,000 troops. That seems wrong. Um, I don't know if he's trying to flank and maybe move in towards Sigatan or Henyang with these troops here. That's the main reason I'm not pulling troops forward to Henyang to reinforce it from Siatan uh, is because he could just move west here and then break our line in two places. So it's kind of hard to tell until things unfold a little bit more. No new aces. We didn't actually have any air combat last turn, I don't think. Wait, what? Negative five air losses? How is that possible? I'm confused. Oh... So I withdrew a A24 squadron to get some political points, and they were in a base where apparently I couldn't do anything with. So apparently I took some air losses after the turn ended uh, on ground losses or ops losses by units that I, I pulled out. So that probably threw all the air calculations. Same for the two buffaloes that I withdrew, a uh, small buffalo squadron. I don't think we lost any pilots. We lost one wounded. We didn't lose anyone killed this turn. So this stuff is all messed up because of, I don't know why it says Japan is negative five. That's weird. Unless it's like corrections for overstated air-to-air -air kills, I'm not sure. Here it says Japan lost nine air-to-air -air, air, nine air units this turn, so I'm not really sure. Um, but I don't know how they would lose negative aircraft. That would be a little bit silly. All right, so that's the situation in China. Meanwhile, in uh, India, uh, at Mitanya, or however you pronounce, or sorry, at Lido. Uh, I have made some changes here. So we had a group of seven B-17D fortresses. I actually had eight B-17s, uh, B-17Es, so a more modern version of the aircraft, available that I was able to swap out. So I was able to swap out some of the old B-17Es, uh, or sorry, B-17Ds with some newer B-17Es, uh, which is good. Um, so now we have, they're all in maintenance. They all need to be sort of set up. It looks like actually, holy shit, it's going to take 16 days for some of these aircraft to be, uh, to be made ready for air. But in any event, that'll be much newer, better B-17s based in India. Meanwhile, I also am hoping that by removing the B-17Ds in that other group, they'll be made available to this squadron so that we can increase the size of the squadron up to its maximum size. I already pulled one reinforcement in. So we're one shy of max complement here for this B-17D group. The LB-30 Liberators here are almost to full strength as well. They've got five aircraft serviceable. One is being maintained. And there are, I think, I guess there's one reinforcement in the pool that we could call in, which would, would get us almost back up to full strength. Uh, which would be pretty nice because I want to. I definitely want to make sure we can get all of our heavy aircraft up to full strength. Meanwhile, our CNAC uh, China Command um, transport here, DC three or DC twos. Uh, there are ten of them available currently. Um, it looks like there are eleven DC threes. So we might want to try and upgrade them when we can. But for the moment, anyway, we've got 10 of those transport aircraft. We've also brought in some Hudson 3s, some Blenheim 4s. So we're building a little bit of a small air force here in eastern India uh, to be able to fly over the hump and help supply China. At least that's the idea. Obviously, you know, 50 aircraft are not going to supply the entire Chinese uh, nation. But, uh, you know, it'll, it might be able to make a dent and, or help in a specific battle like Changsha or something like that. We have 70 aircraft total in this sort of little air armada. Uh, I think the Hudox 4 are too short range to do anything. But other than that, everybody else should be able to participate. Uh, 59 of them are ready for service right now. We're not sending them up quite yet. Um... In terms of other things that we're doing here, we're upgrading our Catalinas in the South Pacific here. So we have upgraded a bunch of small PBY-5 Catalina squadrons to, BB, to PBY-5As. And the PBY-5A... Well, wrong thing. The PBY-5A actually comes with ASB radar. Uh, and also, uh, I'm assuming AC radar means aircraft radar. So I think it's... 
or maybe that is all just air-to-air -air radar. I'm not quite sure, but in any event, that'll make it a much more effective uh, aircraft. So we've upgraded several different squadrons, uh, both at Suva and Nadi, uh, and through other bases throughout the South Pacific, we finally had adequate airframes to do that. Um, do I have enough? No, I don't have enough Wildcats or supply to upgrade the Buffaloes to Wildcats yet. So not, not able to do that quite yet, but... Um, why are they not bringing replacements? Huh. I'd love to build this guy out to its full size, so hopefully they do... Hopefully they upgrade that soon. Meanwhile, the SBT or SBD two Dauntlesses they had been Vindicators. They're now upgraded to the Dauntless, and they're working on repairing the aircraft and making sure that they're ready for sea, so or ready for ready for combat here. So we have 127 aircraft at Suva. Not the strongest punching group of aircraft here in terms of the the planes here. We've got uh, 18 F4 F3 Wildcats, which are a good airframe. 17 P40B Warhawks, another good airframe. Uh, but the uh, Buffaloes are pretty weak. So we've got a total of 53 fighters. All of them are ready for for service in the event that he shows up with a invasion force. The uh, Kiryu Butai would wreck us though. Um, meanwhile, we're landing troops at Vavu. We've also switched the troops that have already landed over to combat status. So now we have 21 engineers and four engineer vehicles, uh, a short Vavu. We are hoping to get them to work starting this turn on improving the port here to be able to have more than 6,000 tons. Cause right now all of our ships kind of are in that like seven to 8,000 ton, uh, situation. So we can't actually unload all of our gear, but in maybe three or four days when we upgrade it to level two ports, at least I'm hoping that's how fast I can do it. Then we can, uh, unload ships up to 12 thousand tons of displacement and get all those troops ashore so we've already got about 113 assault value ashore here at Vavu uh, this is sort of going to be another key link in our Fiji line we've got Fiji to the west we've got Pago to the east Vavu is sort of a, a linking base between the two I also plan to bring in a new uh, U.S. infantry regiment, uh, probably to Horn Island. That seems like the best place for it to go. These is He's sort of expanding his control in New Caledonia, and it may be too late to stop this already. But my fear is that he would go for Wallace Island or Horn Island. That would give him a little bit more control over Savi here down in the southeast. Uh, it would give him a more direct line of supply. It would also really have him uh, control the sort of from Savi up to these northern island chains. It will make our, our situation in Pago a little bit more tenuous, a little bit more concerning. Um, and so I don't think he'll go for Horn or or especially Tavuni because both of those would be, especially Tavuni would be in, in easy range of our bombers at Suva. And now that the airbase at Suva has ex been expanded up to level five airfield, about to be level six, uh, I don't. I don't think it's a great idea because I can fly B7. When this gets up to six, I can fly B17s out and hammer him at any of these islands, really. Um, so I think it's more likely that he would go for Wallace, which is a little bit further east, a little bit more comfortably located. Uh, he could, and also it's a level three airfield, so he could build the airfield up there. Uh, so I really want to build up Vavu and then maybe put a, a battalion or a brigade of troops uh, down at Wallace Island. <laughs> Barbara, sorry. Sorry for the pronunciation. I, I know it's bad. Um, do I have any subs here? I don't think so. I don't know why. Pago, I originally was going to be sort of a, a major support base, but I actually would rather pull some of these ships out because they're a little bit vulnerable this far north. I'm already pulling the tankers out and moving them east. They're kind of wasting space where they're at right now. Um... Last thing I need is if he were to launch a strike against pretty valuable shipping in this area. These guys are pretty fast. All right, so we're going to move these guys, these um, subtenders. Where do I want them? 
Because I do want subs operating forward against him. I just don't know where out of. I think most of her stuff's in Australia. So let's move him down to Auckland and then we'll move him over to Australia next. We're also going to move him at full speed. Hopefully to avoid enemy submarines if we move him at 17 knots. Okay... Um, meanwhile, in uh, Panama, we have, or actually this is Cristobal, we have a battalion of troops loading up. So we got those APDs and a cargo ship here. It's loading up the 3rd uh, Battalion of the 102nd Independent Infantry Regiment. Uh, they're loading up at, uh, at Cristobal. Then they're going to head to San Diego. In San Diego, they're going to meet up with the other element, the 1st of the uh, 102nd. Uh, it's here somewhere. I probably already passed it over. Yep, first of the 102nd right here. Uh, so they're going to move up. They're going to be sister they're sister battalions. Uh, so first of the 102nd Infantry Battalion will arrive. I guess they're both infantry battalions. They must be elements of the 102nd SEP Infantry Regiment. Yep. Uh, so they're going to both meet up here at San Diego. Then we're going to throw them on transports, take them to Bora Bora, where in five days the 2nd Battalion of the 102nd Infantry Regiment will form, and then we will have a assault value strength of about 108, uh, for, so a pretty strong infantry regiment that's going to form up down here uh, near Bora Bora, uh, over here, and then we're going to load them up and we're going to take them probably to Wallace Island uh, and uh, as a forward deployed unit there. Meanwhile, I don't have a lot else going on this turn. Um, you know, the situation in Java is not great, especially with him taking Balak Papin. We have our troops that have withdrawn to some, uh, Samaridina, again, pronunciation, uh, but they can't really do anything there. They're just kind of holding out there. Um, we have, it looks like the S-39 sub is there. Maybe it will do something. It's got a patrol zone there. Maybe it'll intercept someone and do something of some, some value. Probably not. Um, Most of our ships shipping has already been pulled out of uh, the Java Sea region. Looks like we do have some destroyers, some American four stackers. So we'll pull them back to Perth as well. I mean, most of my other shipping... Oh, wow. That's valuable. Um, yeah, let's pull that. Those, those ships back here. We need to make sure that we route them far enough away from enemy air, though. To not get hit. So those are ARs and ASs. Let's actually form a new support group with the slower of the ships. So there's a 16-knot sub-tender, the Holland. I want that to get out of there on its own. I tried to pull these guys out. Meanwhile, this uh, these guys with the slower, less valuable ships will go in a separate convoy. Most of our other ships are already out. We do have some cargo ships here. Not super valuable, but they're still cargo ships. So we'll pull them west to Co Coast. Patrol boats, we're going to leave them there. Our subs are already in position. What are these local minesweepers? I don't even know if we can get them anywhere. Can we get them to Christmas Island? We can. But they can't go anything anywhere from Christmas Island. They can't so they're definitely not gonna be able to make it south. So I guess in that case these guys are gonna go up to Sabang. 
I suppose. And they're going to use routing orders here. They're going to refuel at Oosthaven. Oops. Oosthaven. Then maybe up here, whatever the name of that base is. Refuel at Padang. And then we'll kind of go from there once they get a little bit further north. Uh, we get more R classes in the next 30 days. We don't have any carriers coming soon, I don't think. If you're just looking at British... Looks like we get the Destroyer Fortune in one day at Aden. Then we get a bunch of cargo ships at Aden and Cape Town. We get a tanker at Abaddon. We get the Destroyer Hot Spur with Captain Horatio Hornblower coming in at Aden. Um, some cargo ships, some transports, some more destroyers here in about 22 days. Uh, oh, we do get the Formidable in 28 days. So the Formidable does arrive in Cape Town in a little over a, or a little less than a month. Um, and I think we don't get another battleship until the Valiant in July of 42. So, yeah. I guess I was wrong. Um, these guys are all heading to Oosthaven. Pull a little bit more fuel. Very small amounts of fuel pulled out of Oosthaven, perhaps, by uh, ships that were trying to evacuate. Um, meanwhile, Rangoon, the Air Force there has 94 aircraft, 77 of them are ready. Of those, 61 are fighters, 47 of the fighters are ready. Uh, mostly Air Cobras, P-39Ds are ready. There's pretty good pilots in here. First Lieutenant Moore, 78 experience, 3 kills. So, pretty good squadron there. Um, we've got some Hurricanes. With no real reinforcements. Some Blenheims, some Buffaloes. Guess we might as, pull, might as well pull all the Buffaloes in. That'll give us more fighters. P-40Es. I'm so short on airframes right now. One other uh, aircraft I mentioned, I was talking about the uh, building the bridge in India. We have the Dutch L-18 Lodestars, which have very short range. I don't know how useful they'll be. I can't get them to Kuming unless they're uh, on extended range, which will sap a lot of their efficiency. But um, we'll see about that. Um... Meanwhile, still nothing north of Midway. Probably pull our cruisers back, I guess. Kind of part of me... So they actually have orders to return to Midway. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to run wide west of Midway. And then south. Does that seem like a good idea? Alright, so if we move them west here, actually let's do this. Let's move them down here, and then let's issue orders for them to use waypoints to move west of Midway. Yeah, that looks about right. So what do you guys think about that? Is this is this foolhardy? foolhardy? To move west of Midway and then bisect Wake and Midway with our with our heavy cruiser. I guess sending a heavy cruiser that way may be foolish. But it's not that valuable a squadron. The Portland is a good ship, no doubt. Uh, but then other than that, we've got the St. Louis, which is a Helena class. That's a very good light cruiser. Uh, 
40 victory points. Some, the light cruiser Helena, the Helena class is worth as much, the St. Louis, is worth as much as our heavy cruiser. I mean, he probably doesn't have any, anything super powerful. I think it's just a question of, like, are we just putting ships in, in harm's way for no real tangible purpose? But that's the idea, is to scout west of Midway in force. Yeah, I have other plans for that new Hauser. Um, these guys are all heading south. So we'll see. Um, okay. So those guys are on their way. Meanwhile, we've got reinforcements arriving at Christmas Island. Uh, we've got fuel that's being unloaded there this turn. Uh, we have, it's, can't unload fuel. Well, we're working on getting it to level three ports. We have uh, a Marine Raider Regiment, Coastal Artillery, and a Base Force arriving at Christmas Island today. And then we have uh, some aircraft that are on their way to Pago Pago, a new pursuit group, and a bombardment group here, uh, 13 B-26 Marauders, and um, 16 P-40E Warhawks, strengthening our Fiji line. In addition to that, we have... Uh, Canadian 13th Canadian Infantry Brigade on its way to Christmas Island as well to unload there to strengthen Christmas Island uh, and then we have some other reinforcements that are on their way to strengthen Palmyra but really my, my focus here is strengthening both Palmyra and more so Christmas Island uh, to be very strong uh, bases that are, are not easy to attack so that's the uh, sort of direction we're going there I don't think they're atoll atoll, so I can cram more troops ashore. Um, you know, honestly, I'm just gonna have them head back to base. I don't want to risk it. I've got other plans for midway. Let's do this. Let's. Set the waypoint here. We'll divert in a little bit closer to Midway. And then we'll kind of swing back east toward Pearl. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot of other plans. I'm pulling these tankers and fleet oilers out of Pago. I am... Uh, my, my heavy cruiser force is strong at Auckland. I've also got some fleet oilers there. Um, the carriers are over this direction. Um... I'm bringing the British carrier south toward Perth. So you've got the Hermes is on its way, finally, after substantial damage caused due to lack of fuel on some of its escorts. They're on their way into Perth. And then we've got the Royal Sovereign and the Indomitable in their, on their way into Perth, low on fuel, but they were the saviors of the Fiji or of the uh, Hermes force. The, the cargo ships that I was worried about, the, the transport that I was worried about uh, on their way to Aden that were uh, completely out of fuel, um, are not taking any any system damage, so that's good for us. They're still at four four two one one, so they haven't taken any damage in two days now, uh, despite being out of fuel. So they're about twenty eight days away. They're going to be a month till they get to Aiden, but it doesn't look like we're going to lose them all sunk due to lack of fuel because their off map is treated differently. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, we could stay north a little bit one more turn, just in the event that. Um, maybe that, uh, ship that we had originally seen over here wasn't, I don't know. I'm just kind of sailing around in this area to see if that, uh, ship is still in the vicinity. Uh, Stein, I have been about two hours into this turn off mic as well. Some turns more so than others. Meanwhile, this light cruiser that just arrived at Panama, we should probably send it. What is it? It's the Nashville? It's a Brooklyn class? Ooh, that's a very good light cruiser class. All right, let's get that in uh, in a task force. Um, let's form maybe a transport task force. Yeah, let's get this into San Diego. 
Man, I love the new modern U.S. light cruisers. They're so good. They also just look sleek. All right, so they're headed that way. We'll have these guys. We've got some... These guys are ammunition ships that allow underway replenishment or at least anchored replenishment. And then a cargo ship. So we'll move them also to San Diego. And I think that's probably about, about it for the turn. We're still a ways away from getting any more major U.S. ships. In terms of ships sunk, we don't see anything last turn, but we did hear a report that, uh, that the Japanese lost something. Um, Japanese ships, what are the most valuable ships we've sunk? Still, We're still claiming the Congo. That seems far-fetched, but it's been almost... Almost two months. Well, more than two months since uh, since we're claiming it was sunk. So it'd be awesome if it was sunk. We know that. Here's the other silly thing here. It's still reporting to us that the Fuso was sunk via collision. We know for a fact the Fuso wasn't sunk. We saw it last turn. You would think the intelligence would update. I also don't think the Maya was sunk either. But some of these other smaller ships, yes. Where are we at with uh, claiming Japanese sub sinkings? If these are all true, which is a big if. These are midget subs down here, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, fleet boats that we're claiming sunk. Koshin, thanks for the subscription. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a lot else going on on this turn. Yeah, the Maya was in a shore bombardment the other turn. So, I mean, we, we put a torpedo into the Maya. We knew that, but... Um, some of the, some of the fog of war seems silly when like we have combat reports telling us, maybe it's just factoring in, Hey, just cause you saw a battleship at uh, Ambon doesn't mean you necessarily know which battleship it is. I'm not sure. Uh, meanwhile, Johnston Island is still working on its fortifications and its port. It's 44%. We've got subs that are shipping water, trying to get back to port. Hopefully the Nautilus doesn't sink due to my own carelessness. Um, PBY 5 Catalina sighting reported six Japanese ships at 187 140 near Christmas Island last turn. That's got to be some like phantom eyes, right? 184, 180, where is that? No way. I would have them east. That 187, 140 would be here. There's no way. <laughs> Some Catalina was a little bit scared. There's no way that the Japanese have a six-ship task force 400 miles east of Christmas Island. That's just not, no, that's not possible. I refuse to believe it. Speaking of intelligence, um, we know someone's planning an attack on Singapore. A tanker, Shou Maru, is moving to Kandari. If that's true, tanker Kandari. Well, no, because Christmas Island, the the island it's claiming. The base it's claiming is here. This is the Eastern Pacific. It's not It's not a raid on the Indian Ocean from there. All right. Kandari is claiming that he's bringing in tankers into Kandari. It could be a forward operating base for additional m movements, perhaps. I do want to see if I can get ships there, though. So let's go ahead and set the patrol zone. We'll set Kandari. We'll set the two hexes out. We'll set hexes outside of Kandari as well. I'm hoping his tanker isn't already in Kandari, because that would be not so fun. But I'm going to go ahead and blitz him over there. To get into position quickly. These Dutch subs, meanwhile, also have, have fuel. So we're going to try and get them over to Kandari as well. Similar patrol zone. I have not spotted much in the way of any Japanese tankers. So any opportunity, in my opinion, to intercept an enemy tanker 
has to be grasped with both hands. Okay. So again, if he's sending tankers to Kendari, then I am going to swarm Kendari with submarines. I don't even think those can get up there. So we're going to send three tankers to Kandari, and maybe we'll spot an enemy tanker and do something with it. All right, so what else? Anything else actionable? Planning for attacks on Changsha. That's not really a surprise. Fifty-six construction companies on a transport moving to truck. We already have subs around truck. That's about all I see this turn. So I guess it'll just, you know, we got to continue waiting and seeing what's what's happening here and see what uh, we, they're more efficient if we give them a patrol zone, right? Use patrol zone. Zambon. So hopefully maybe they, they come back in with their... Uh, Battleships and we can get a torpedo into them or something. All right, so we're setting sub-ambushes at Kandari at Ambon. Uh, we have seen the loss of Balak Poppin. We probably want to put some subs in there as well, but I'm, I've got to get some of those other subs refueled. I had hoped that we could intercept enemy tankers maybe moving into Miri, but I haven't seen any indication. Oh, shit. I haven't seen any indication that there are any enemy tankers in that vicinity. This guy's beat to hell. The Tarpon is a 48 system damage. Guess we gotta get him out of there. Pull back to Darwin, I suppose. Mm, we can go mission speed all the way back there? God bless the American fleet boats. How's the Stingray doing fuel-wise? She's doing okay. Seawolf's okay. O20, okay. Alright, so that's the situation there. Still hoping to ambush some, some subs off Miri. Swordfish and Sari are on their way back to Batavia. Or Batvia, or however you pronounce it. Whatever it is. The 108th Base Force moving east. Trying to cut the rail line from Bangkok south toward his troops in Singapore. Sixteenth and forty eighth brigades are moving west to Pagu. Actually one of them should be moving northeast, right? No. Okay. We do need to move someone north of there to make sure that he doesn't get cut off. Move the Gurkhas on that rail line. I don't want him moving down that rail line and cutting us off uh, from our base at Rangoon. We want that rail line all the way north. Okay. So, Gamal, yeah, I have, uh, I think I have that on my audible wish list. But, yeah, I think that is... I think that's about it for this turn. We've still got a strong force in the southern portion of the Philippines. Actually, these guys, they can't rebuild the 101st Philippine. Zamboga and Cambodia, or Kaigon. So we actually have elements over here. They're generating their own supply. They're just fine hanging out over there. 
they're not going to get there in time. But if they do, it'd be great because then we could form that battalion up. So, okay. Uh, I'm not doing anything with aircraft at Changsha. I don't have the ability to. So I had aircraft at Changsha previously, or I guess we had them north of Changsha, Changtha. We flew cap over Changsha two turns ago and intercepted him. After that uh, successful engagement, we pulled these aircraft west to Chongqing to regroup, regroup, and that is where they are right now at Chongqing, uh, sort of regaining some of their strength uh, and uh, repairing some of the damage. We're going to pull all the aircraft back out here, and maybe in a week or so we'll return to surprise him again. But uh, trying to fight a stand-up fight against the Japanese Air, Air Force in China is a losing battle. And so you just kind of, you pick and you pick your spots. You can't really stay more than a day, a day or two at most. Because as soon as he shifts his focus to the airfields, the real risk is that he decides, okay, I'm not actually going to bomb Changsha this turn. I'm going to bomb Changtha. And then destroys half your squadron on the ground. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for this turn. So I know we've been going for about an hour now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts, as always. But until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying, once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.